Marquisha Wiley. Say that name. Remember that name. 27 year old life taken. At the truck park on West 7th Street. Yes, sir. 657. 657. Thank you. You're welcome. So we are here on West 7th Street to uh, honor the life of a young lady and remember the other 14 to 15 victims as well. That fire truck you see right there, and those firefighters with the hoses, they're washing away the blood from the bloodbath that occurred here last night. And we want to make sure that her death is not in vain and that we don't have this happen again. And if, if we don't make some changes in the inner cities of St. Paul, Minneapolis, there's no guarantee this won't happen again. There's a vigil going on here for the victim and the victims. We're gonna drive by, you might hear, might wanna shrink that just a little bit. Uh, a little wider. So. A little more just to get a little more light in there. There you go. Very sad that another parent found out their daughter has passed away. So here we are, Seventh and Chestnut. You've been here with us many, many times. Live on patrol on Friday night. As you know, we were here last Friday, and um, we love this area. It's, it's honestly, it's the greatest row of restaurants in St. Paul, right next to our XL Energy Center for the Minnesota Wild play. So, it's a busy entertainment venue. It's important. It's important to protect it and protect the people that frequent here. So if you haven't, uh, we're going to talk candidly about what's going on. If you haven't shared this video with your friends, we'd ask that you do now and, and uh, help us have a candid conversation with them. Um, What's happening here? You've heard Pat and I say it before. We're just, we are, uh, we do not understand why some elected officials don't get the relationship between officer presence and safety. If you went to the Vikings game today, I wasn't there, but if you went there, you would have seen 70 police officers. If you go to Walmart in Roseville, you're gonna see a police officer. There's a reason that companies hire police officers. You see, by the way, you see the water, the wetness on the street there in front of us to the right. That's from the fire truck just washing it down. There's, police officers do prevent crime. We just have to get that. Yes, they arrest people and they do a great job of responding to calls, but their mere presence does stop crime. Every single day, presence stops crime. And that's why we're here every Friday, or if we're up at Bournes or the Foundry or other places, we know that our presence curtails shootings. Every place we've been outside of here has had shootings when we're not there. When we're not there. Um, and the thing about it is, 
the St. Paul police officers do not have enough time because they're short of staff to be able to do proactive visits to these potential areas. And um, hi, folks. Hi. We're going to be well, talking for just a little bit about the serious matter. Very somber Thank you. night. Oh, very sorry. Sorry, very sorry. Very sorry you guys had to experience that. Thank you. Thanks for, thank you for saying hi. So we're, you know that the staffing study that was done two and a half years ago by the St. Paul City Council recommended 50 extra officers. We also know that the St. Paul Police is down another 50 to 70 officers through attrition. So, um, and the retirement rate is increasing dramatically because of the job. So we, uh, we, we need to get, should we just keep driving, you think, while we're talking, or anything? I think we should. I think this is a good That's place good. right okay. here. Why don't you roll your window up just a little bit here. Um, so we need, to, uh, we need to get elected officials to understand that there's a direct correlation. Some do. I know there's a couple city council members that understand, but the majority of St. Paul city council people do not, and a majority of the Minneapolis, they cannot accept the concept that police officers detour and prevent crime. And it's so ludicrous. We've been doing this for 40 plus years. And I, I have to say this, watching Chief Axtell struggle to um, get support the last three years has been troubling and every year his budget has been declined he's done a great job of presenting the facts and pat i don't understand you know you and i wouldn't attempt to discuss zoning issues or be experts i do not understand why the mayor doesn't use todd's professional advice i don't get it you don't you don't police according to the advice of activists or people who have had no involvement with policing. Right. You go, you go to the people who are doing the job, who have the boots on the ground. Experience through time and wisdom. I, I just, I do not, I do not get why I do not get why they don't listen. It's the time. There's always time for talking, but right now at this moment, the time for talking is over. The time for committees are over. It's time to take some action that is meaningful. So if you had a, the proper number of another 100 to 120 officers at any given night, you'd have 20 extra squads on the street that could do a lot of what we do, proactively get to the potential hotspots. Um, so. I mean, this stretch, this stretch of bars and restaurants right here is ripe for two to three teams of foot patrol officers whose only duty is that. I heard talk about overtime being devoted to you, to this area. I think it's for earlier in the evening. For though. earlier in the not, evening. Not during the later part, yeah. And even then, those officers are subject to being called away. Well, and if you watch Todd's last presentation to the city council about a month and a half ago, he said the overtime isn't working because of how exhausted our people are. And they're totally exhausted from um, constant know, overtime holdovers, over. constant mandatory overtime. Yeah. They're exhausted, mentally and physically exhausted. So three suspects arrested. This is the other interesting part, of course. All of them had felony records. All of them would be prohibited from even carrying a firearm. So it's not as if... Uh, a law saying you can't carry a firearm would have helped. These three suspects intentionally carried firearms, even though they were fed they were federally prohibited from carrying firearms. They couldn't go into a gun shop and buy a gun. 
any way in which they obtained their guns and they could was not illegal. Get, and they couldn't get a permit to carry one anywhere either. So, um, it doesn't look like it's gang related. Uh, I will tell you that this is why police presence does help because it cools people off when they know there's an officer in the immediate proximity. It's just, uh, but I want you to think about, this is, this is the most bizarre part for me. We've been talking about, you and I for over a year on this, but just in general on YouTube, but in general, this debate about law enforcement has been going on for two years. And what I don't understand is how come our mayor is not willing to just open his mind to the possibility that someone else might have better information. I mean, isn't that the way when you're a leader, don't you just try to say, okay, what if I, what if I was to follow the advice of the professionals? You know, what's, how does that play out? At least this is the thing I loved about George Latimer. He, he, he played in his mind the what if game. And it's okay, say they're right and I do this, what happens, what's the possibilities, the end result. I do not understand why the mayor continues to think that the only one way is his way when he has little or no experience in law enforcement or public safety whatsoever. None. So are we upset? Yeah. I'm angry. Professionally, we've just we've just finally decided that all the warning signs were here. I, I told the Minneapolis Police Department six months ago that they were at the tipping point. That was right before the shooting in downtown Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Several people hit. Well, St. Paul, we're at the tipping point here. And he here's the tipping point. You see these businesses here? They depend on customers. We've been in every restaurant here. Tom Reed's, we love. Burger Moe's, we love. The Downtowner, great. Dave Cassetta, great place. Must Baked Mastacholi is about as good as it gets. The Truck Park, great place. Tr truck Park, great place. We've talked to the owner. The the uh, Pat McGovern's, Pat Bamer, uh, college teammate. Just a great, great strip here eagles eagle street up ahead so i have people from all over the twin cities come to this stretch of restaurants yes. and bars yes yeah so how it, many are but how many aren't going to come well that's now? my this is my point this is a team thing between the businesses pay pay taxes for safety if you can't provide a safe environment for the people coming to eat here or coming to the XL Energy Center, these businesses are gonna crumble. And when they crumble, the town crumbles, the tax base. So this is why it's a, it's a team effort. It's a team effort between the city council, the mayor and the public. And I, I'm here to say that if there isn't some quick change. Now the mayor's gonna tell you that he's hiring a new academy. And that's true after Todd pushed to get some extra bodies. 60 66 bodies. offices. It's going to take him four months to train and six months to FTO. So, so we're going to be at about a year before they're ready to hit the streets on their own. Right. And by then, attrition. Right. So we got to move fast. So the, actually, the chief wants a second. He wants a second. He wants a second academy. We're going to call these people over. They've been going, hey, folks, you, so come on over. You, you came to the truck park right after or what? Yeah, Hi, you were, were you there during, when it happened no, or no, right no, no. after? No, 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 we had just pulled into town, okay. but I don't want to be on live, so. I'm oh, you don't? Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, well. But, uh, no, we, I'd, uh, I'd, we did want to meet you. We uh, drove in last night from Illinois, and we were. Avid fans. Oh, avid thank fans. you. Well, yeah. Uh, we're actually YouTubers. We had a big YouTuber rally. Oh, you did? Yeah, and I don't want to say my YouTube name on there. But, you yeah. should You should text us your YouTube. Actually, group. I did email you one time a while back, and I think I put it on there. Um, I was the one that sent... Um, to check out the book, um, Dear Mr. Henshaw. Okay. We well, we, get, we got about 12 different venues of I know, stuff I know. that comes flying at us. But I also sent you a picture of my Corvette that's for sale. That you need to buy. Nassau <laughs> Blue. I'll show you a picture. Because you said you want a Camaro. Canero ain't good enough. <laughs>
Are you guys yeah, going to be around here some... tonight for a while? Or oh, we're we're we are home. leaving right now. Oh, you are. Oh, sorry. Well, then. We, we have to go to the Foundry, <laughs> and then we got to go to Club Holiday. There, there you go. Club Holiday. Get there. Get there. Everyone's but... like, what's Club Holiday? I was like, Live them. You, mind, you mind if I do a video with you guys real quick? No, that'd be fine. Awesome. But be sure we're to, to mention in the video that we're talking about crime that's going on oh, yeah. here. I will. We want to take. We want to be serious about this. This is this is a dark day for St. Paul. This is a dark day it for really St. Paul. We found Bob and Pat from uh, Live on Patrol, and uh, of course, you guys already know my channel if you're watching it. But we just wanted to say hi. It's a dark day in St. Paul because of what happened over at um, the truck park. Uh, bar last night as we got into town but we just wanted to uh, say hi to Bob and Pat and uh, hopefully they'll watch my channel because uh, I'm not going to throw a plug in there but yeah they're hopefully they'll watch my channel so, all right thank you but, uh, thank you it's Robert's ride along Robert, okay. okay check it out all right oh, yeah thanks, all thanks right. a lot Pre hi. appreciate it thank you oh, right. hi. hi it's Rachel hi Rachel hi. oh I'm so sorry I want to so, tell you so guys sorry. for your service. So sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we're just. It's been a rough day. This is Rachel, uh, Vanessa's mom, who uh, just lost her daughter crazy. over there in I'll Minneapolis. Tell you guys thanks for everything you guys did. And uh, Rachel's still suffering as she should be. Let me, let me hop lost out of his daughter. Let me hop well, let's let Rachel talk a little bit about. Come over here and come talk up, about up. what, what happened. Up. We'll hug you here, but we need to. We, we want to hear your your thoughts on what's happened and I know you're very frustrated with the case not being solved as I would be too so what can we do to help I don't I just thank you guys for everything you do I don't well we, I wish we could bring her back you're constantly in my thoughts and prayers yeah. thank you constantly so nice. Did you just come down here to see us, or did you? Were you down? I was down the street. You were. And I seen you guys were on, and I just wanted to come say thank you. Uh, well, we're not going to ever forget her. You know that, right? And if Never. that whole she, uh, Vanessa was killed in that street racing uh, shooting incident on June fifth. June fifth. And it's still hard to believe. It's it's no no no. <sighs> We're, we're devastated for you. Parents' worst nightmare. And then just seeing all this. Yeah. It's horrible. It brings it all back, rushing back. Every day. Yeah. We'll I follow up with that hug there, Pat. I didn't mean yeah, to stop Yeah, let me do this.
All right, we're back. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Thank you for hanging with us, those of you that did. Um, as Rachel, Vanessa's mom. Jesus. So that's hard. We, we, we're going we're gonna to have God. a private meeting with her somewhere God, he's okay. soon. Let me catch. Let me catch up with you when we're done. So. Okay. Anyhow, Take care. back on the staffing issue, it does make a difference. The more you can post and tell people that every police officer that you will ever meet will tell you that police presence does help curtail crime. Sometimes it just delays it so that people can get their alcohol out of their system and forget the anger the whole concept of police work is when it comes to violence is to cool off get a cooling off period so people can get over that anger because the stupidity of pulling a gun out in a bar is can't be measured right pat I mean, no no you know and and on that note that call i just got i can't he'd prefer we not share his name but it's a saint paul officer we know very well his son was in there last night Ugh. with some friends, and he uh, broke down a little bit when he talked about his son's friends had blood from the victims on them. Actually, we uh, on Facebook, you might have seen this. There was a young lady that posted on Live on Patrol that uh, she was in there. And we're gonna call her, and hopefully I can get the phone to work properly. Our hearts go out to her because the thing that struck me on her post is how she still hears the screams. I, I, I listen to the interviews of many people in the Pulse nightclub, you know, that was a terrorist act, pure terrorism, slightly different than this. This has caused terror, but that shooter came in to kill everyone. And the, the dreams and the haunting of the sound of screaming and after the fact was something they all talked about. And yep. so this young lady is, uh, experienced yeah. the same thing, right? Her, Somebody down up here. Uh, okay. Oh, did you drop something? Oh, no, no problem. You know, we'll stay here. We'll block traffic while you pick it up. We thought maybe you were hurt. Go ahead if you need to get some more time. So we're going to talk to Amber. We're not going to reveal her last name. And Amber, uh, thank you so much for being willing to call us. Let me just see if I can get this, uh, this phone working properly so we get you on speakerphone here. See if it, there we go. Hello. Amber, how horrific, huh? It was horrible. Well, thank you for being willing to tell the rest of the viewers how horrible the tragedy was from being there. Thank you, thank you for being willing to talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amber. So. Yeah, it was, it's hard even just seeing you guys sit in front of that building because in my head, I still see everybody lined up in front of the building and there was blood everywhere last night. Well, we're not, we won't probe, but tell us what, <laughs> tell us, we're, start at the beginning and tell us, you know, what was, was, was the atmosphere there beforehand and how this all roll out in your mind? Um, I think a lot of, I, honestly, I think that a lot of people ended up getting shot because the atmosphere that, but right before this happened, it was normal. There was no altercation or there, if it, there was, it wasn't loud because I didn't hear anything or see anything that was like alarming or didn't see anybody fighting, nothing like that. So me and my friend had just... We were just at the bar, we had grabbed a drink, and then we were standing 
with our other friends next to one of the emergency exit doors and there was a security guard standing right behind us um and we had left our drinks there with one of our friends and walked across the bar to go to the bathroom still didn't see any altercations or hear anything and we were the next one up in line for the bathrooms and then all of a sudden the shooting just the shots just started going off and it seemed like they just kept going kept going kept going and we were able to one of the bathroom stalls had just opened so about 15 or 20 of us actually were able to get into that bathroom stall that opened and that's where we were once the when the shots kept going and we couldn't see anything obviously because we're in the bathroom but all we could hear was the shots and the screams and the cries and it was horrible terrifying so sorry that you had to live through that yeah and then coming out we we all stayed in there until somebody had told us that the police were out there but by that time obviously coming out you see everybody there was just as everybody knows a lot of people shot well uh, everybody knows that but nobody experienced it like you so were, yeah. were most of the victims outside by then or inside or what uh what um by that time a lot of the victims were outside and they were on the sidewalks so once we came out that emergency exit door yep. there they, they were just lined up that street view that you could see when you guys were sitting on chestnut looking towards um the bar there that whole sidewalk was lined up with people and there was actually a person laying right in the middle of that intersection um also and then as soon as i walked out i I called my mom to let her know what happened because sometimes she listens to the scanner so i figured she was freaking out she was watching my kids so i wanted to let her know that i was okay and then it made it even worse because when i was standing at the corner i looked out not even realizing but there was like i was standing in a pool of blood and that made it 10 times worse just seeing all that and then realizing what you're standing in yeah yeah i saw someone posted a video of security wrestling with a person with a white shirt I, it looked like he was one of the suspects I don't know, and we we do believe one of the suspects was got shot while he was in there as well. Um, but I don't know if you saw any of that, any of a security, because I did. They do have a pretty good security component in there, right? Um, they do. There, the security there was a lot of security there, but the one thing that I do have a complaint about is the security guard that was by the bathrooms that was kind of in charge of that area. He was actually trying to push us all out of the bathroom area. Oh during the whole shots fired thing he wasn't trying to let us go back in there but there was so many of us trying to get in that he eventually kind of just let it happen yeah good thing you stayed in there yeah yeah it sounds yeah. like a training issue um yeah there have been cases you know and the pulse nightclub was one of them where the suspect eventually did go into the bathroom but that was we took that was a take control of the venue and then go into the bathroom and use people as hostages but clearly that was a little different scenario than what we had here so i think you did the, you did absolutely the smart thing of hiding and running for cover thank god you did yeah mm -hmm. yeah well what can we do to help um i i don't know i'm eventually gonna have to see probably a trauma therapist or yeah somebody because it's like you said it's a hard situation and just now now it's all over the news and social media and it's national it's national it, it's kind of yeah it's everywhere how about the, friend, how about like, the friend you were with it. how about the friend you were with how is that person doing um physically okay mentally the same as me just kind of trying to process everything and, yeah um Thankfully, we had both went to the bathroom because, like I said, we're standing right by the door and her friend that stayed there with our drinks where we were just at a couple minutes prior actually had some of the victims that were standing next to her. Some of those people were shot standing right next to her. Yeah. So that's another aspect that I tried not to think about, but I think if we were still standing there, we might have been one of those people that 
was in the crossfire. Yeah. Did the police get your name, or did you end up leaving before that? Or I mean, it doesn't sound like oh, you the actually... police were. I didn't see too much, but the police were all attending to the victims when yeah. we were still when we were headed out. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's what I figured. Well, we're we're so sorry you had to live through that trauma, but thank you. Maybe you sharing the trauma, what you went through, will help this town figure out a way to try to stop that in the future and you know curtail the next incident prevent the next incident so we're going to try to make your experience have some value yeah definitely so, so hopefully some some politicians can listen and hopefully there's more police presence out there i mean when we were going in there there was police in the area but obviously none of them could be directly at any yeah. one of those bars that were there well maybe we got to talk about that i don't know what time you got there but they do they do work to beat because of the homeless shelter down the street but quite mm -hmm. often they're not there at after 12 o'clock so we're, we're gonna i'm gonna talk to chief axel about that actually tonight or tomorrow about extending those hours to closing do you, I know you, you posted on Live and Patrol. Do you watch when Pat and I are out there at all? Live and yeah, I was one of, I started watching it when you first started well, <laughs> driving around before Pat was even in the car with you. Yeah, well, that wasn't nearly as fun without Pat. But we did, we were there Friday night. You probably noticed that. We sensed that yeah. the, the crowd was a little larger and a little more hostile toward us and toward each other. We could see it a little bit, so... I don't know what to make out of that. It's, uh, but I just, I, I think a police presence there in front of that establishment at closing time between midnight and two would go a long way mm -hmm. to help yeah. making sure that people didn't use guns on others. Because nobody, none of these guys really want to get caught. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think that would probably help. But maybe some metal detectors going into some of these bars well that's another help. thing the wanding even if they had metal wands to for to wand people that would help but you know i think last night all those garage doors were open though weren't they when, yeah they were and so it, it'd be nice to maybe have everybody come in through a common entrance so that mm -hmm. they don't come and go so quickly so i'm sure there'll be a lot of follow-up questions but Hearing your story is going to help force everybody to really listen. Mm -hmm. so, thank, yeah, you, thank is, you for doing there's this. There's a ton more out there like me that heard and saw everything, and yeah. that's going to be really affected for a long time because of it. You know, I I can't imagine, but that this is it's a little bit hard to talk about it so soon after, and we really appreciate you doing that. It's uh, yeah, I almost I, I thought about when when i was first asked if you guys if i wanted to talk about it i almost said no because i was it was a hard day today and everybody just thinking about it and i was like well maybe somebody needs to hear it so yeah, that I was the only reason. everybody needs to and you know i wouldn't have got a hold of you if, i wouldn't have texted you if i hadn't seen um your post on facebook and it was very powerful you know mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I hope I hope your life can. I hope you can fill it with enough memories in the short term to get those get those memories out of there. And uh, yeah. maybe sometime we can meet you and and you know and having the trauma of meeting Bob and Pat will you know take <laughs> over. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, Amber, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you Amber. Thank you so much. We can't yeah. we can't thank, thank you, you enough. We're, we're we're gonna be working on fixing that so it doesn't happen to others. Thanks a lot. Yeah, and hopefully there's people that listen now that yeah. see there's an issue. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Amber. We'll call you, we'll we'll call you for a lunch sometime. Where what part of town are you from? Um, I live in Invergrove now. Invergrove. All right. Well, that's not very far. Yeah. Right down Highway no. 61. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye. Well, that was awesome of her to uh, yes talk to us. That was just I can't really talk to her. Um.
sorry. So hang on one second. Who will? Oh. Um all right, let me call you let me call you right back in a minute, okay? Mute that this for is, a second. Yeah, I'm going to mute this. Just, so in the, in the interim there, after Amber was talking, we have another person that was there that would like to share what happened and talk on the air. And by the way, anybody else listening, you know, feel free to feel free to message Pat and um, tell them they like to talk. So, I mean, this is this. Oh, hang on a second, I didn't get it. We're gonna call you from the phone. This is a. Uh, I, I, no, we're gonna call your phone, okay? All right. Is he with them there? Yes. Hey, I, he's not. He doesn't live here, but I gotta. I'll oh. send you his number. And he's okay. gonna answer. All right. Yeah. Just send, send Pat the number, and then we'll call him. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Just don't mention the last name. Okay. All right. You're on. You're All right. On. Bye. That was his father. Who. Uh, Oh, reached out to us. So, I mean, this, you're not going to find many mass shootings where 15 people are shot. Thankfully, thankfully, more weren't killed because usually, usually they are. That's our capital. One of the reasons we're pulling up is, you know, I got to say, I'm just going to say before we call them, if the city leaders do not respond to this crime spike, and I am just tired of people saying it's the national trend. Well, part of the national trend is driven by the defunding the police in some of these cities. If, but if the city leaders don't respond, clearly we need help from the state legislature and the governor because there are things that can be done and maybe the governor has to fund some programs I talked to Sheriff Hutchinson today we were saying if the if the legislature the governor is willing to fund some some proactive police activities in terms of you know presence at bars we're not talking about you know searching out and arresting people although that sometimes has to happen just being a preventative force at the downtown businesses, giving people comfort that they can go out downtown. And, uh, you know, if, if the city leaders aren't going to do it, it's got to be, it's got to come from the state. So here we go. We're going to talk to another victim. You go ahead. Hello? Yes. Hey, uh, Patrick. This is he. Hi, this is Pat Scott. Hi. Uh, j just so you know, we are live right now. Gotcha. And uh, we talked I'm, to your dad. We did did talk to your dad, and he gave us your number. We understand you were there during this horrific incident last night. Mm-hmm. If I. I can't imagine how traumatic that was. Is there anything you feel comfortable sharing with us about it? Oh, uh, and it's just kind of one of those situations where everything just kind of goes to a blur, really. It's hard to, you look back at it, it's maybe a minute, minute and a half of actual action reality, but it feels like an hour when you're there. An eternity, so it's just kinda, I imagine. Yeah, it really slows down time. How many people were you there with? Uh, three. Did you see what 
cause the altercation, Patrick? Um, no. It's just all of a sudden a couple of loud bangs and you see everyone kind of stop what they're doing and look around is, I mean, average person's first thought at a loud bang isn't going to gunshots. Right. But, so you see everyone kind of freeze and simultaneously try and figure out what the heck is going on and then the first people start to realize it and they hit the floor and you just kind of instinctually follow suit. So is that, did you end up hitting the floor yourself? Uh, yeah. Okay. Were you, uh, it looked like the, the uh, security guards may have been wrestling with one of the suspects. Did you see any of that? Uh, I know they were on top of a guy. I couldn't tell you for sure if it was, if they got the right guy, if they grabbed someone who had been firing, but they definitely grabbed someone. There were, I think, three of them on top of them. Was that the man all in white? I wouldn't be confident enough to say for sure, but he had, like, white shoes on. Looks well, like it. How, how are you doing today, Patrick? We talked to another person that was there that was traumatized by it. How are you feeling today? Uh, a little shaken up. I mean, mostly just happy that everyone I went with got out as unscathed as you can in the situation. But definitely uh, shakes you up, and it kind of, I you know, at least two of my friends that I was there with have talked about how it's going to be a long time before they want to go out in a public space, be it a movie theater, a crowded bar. Yeah. It just makes it hard to go anywhere when you feel like, well, this happened in a relatively safe area in a, what you imagine to be a relatively safe city. Yeah. That's probably a lot of people are thinking that right now. Yeah, it just kind of shakes your reality. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think that's going to be the same reaction a lot of people who were there last night are going to go through. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that you get two people that, for whatever reason, have a problem with each other. And I don't know. It's just kind of sad to see that you, people can care so little about the people that might be caught between them. Yeah, good, great point. That's exactly where we're at in this world. It's sad. Just well, I'm going to be interested. We want to keep in touch with you as time goes on with your group because what I'm mostly interested in is how how this will impact the future of people going out because even though others weren't there, I know a lot of my friends are saying, boy, I don't know if I want to go down there. And we can't afford that to happen because that will destroy St. Paul's business climate and we don't want that to happen. So we got to figure out a way to make it safe, to let people know it is safe and show them police presence and enough cops in the area that, you know, like a lot of cities do around their major professional stadiums, there's police officers walking the beat when people are there. There's pe police officer car outs, cars outside. So we're going to work on that, but I want to keep in touch with you and your father in the next week or two to see what your, what your feeling is about going out. Sure. All right. Well, thanks for taking our call. Appreciate it. Tell your dad we yeah, said absolutely. thanks. absolutely. Tell your dad we said thanks. You got it. Thank you. Best to you and your friends, Patrick. Thanks. I appreciate it a lot. Bye. Bye. Have a good All right. So there you heard from two people that were there last night. I'm sure there's going to be more on the news at 10 o'clock. Uh, if you haven't shared this video with your friends, I we sure wish you would. Um, and sometime in the next half hour, we're going to call. You know, we've been calling all the mayor candidates to have them talk about crime and public safety. And we've talked to three. And the fourth one we're going to call in a little bit. We're gonna, you want to talk about that carjacking that just happened, Pat? We can kind of let people know what we're looking for. Yeah, at, in the 300 block of LaFond, right before we started, there was an armed carjacking. Uh, two believed to be teenage black males at gunpoint took a black Toyota RAV4 from uh, the victim. The plate on it is EAZ 155 Edward Adam Zebra. 155 
Was the victim the juvenile? Was there one of the there suspects? Was, uh, I both, I believe. Yeah, there was juveniles involved here once again. EAZ 155. Make sh confirm that for sure. I think it was in Emmerich. I think Katie sent it to us. It is EAZ 155, and it's a 2018 RAV4. So it's not the absolute latest style, but it's the generation before. You know, another thing of note in this uh, shooting last night, these weren't kids. These were all three were in their late 20s to mid 30s so these weren't kids out there shooting guns these were some uh, these were some adult men with felonious histories well we there was a press conference that the mayor conducted it's about 12 minutes long I watched it today Sometime around 5 o'clock tonight. You can probably find it on... I know you can find it on KSTP and CARE 11. I'm not sure about the other channels if they posted it, but it'd be worthwhile watching that. Um, unfortunately, the mayor would not commit to hiring more police officers than is currently planned. Um, Which, as we stated, is... When all is said and done, we'll still be below minimum staffing well, for St. Paul. Three years of attrition and increasing crime. Just so we're all clear, it's argu arguably the 32nd homicide. Here's the point. We're on pace to set a record this year for homicides. We tied the record last year. Yes, we right? did. Tied the record last year. And that was 34. Year. Yeah. So we're on pace to tie and pass the record this year. It's not a good record, of course. No. I mean, it, 32 with almost three full months to go in the year. This does not bode well. But there's been plenty of time to have some action steps taking place. And plenty of time to follow up on the chief's recommendations. And we keep hearing about a committee to create a committee. We don't need committees. We're just, you know, we've been around, we've watched, we have a lot of knowledge of what the criminals are thinking. But right now what they're thinking is, well, I'm not even going to tell you what they're thinking. It's just... So. The chief of police was hired for his experience, for his expertise, and for his knowledge. Let the police chief handle the policing. Listen to your police chief. Well, watch the watch the mayor's press conference. I mean, I'm. Uh, I just want him to admit that he might not have all the answers, and that's the problem. I mean, when you're in charge of something and you don't have the experience, you need to use people that do. That's right. No matter what it is. I'm sure the governor listens to his commissioner of public safety, is the colonel of the state patrol. You know, I'm sure when it comes to education, he's listening to his education commissioner. You can't know everything when you're in charge, but you can know the people that have the answers. And they are people with experience. So. I mean, there, there was acknowledgement that downtown crime and safety concerns were addressed largely through an additional police presence paid through overtime. Right. There is an acknowledgement that police overtime near the homeless shelter on 7th Street is having a positive impact. Right. That even though it's tough to overcome all the issues that arise from that absolutely yeah, but, but there's an acknowledgement that it's making a difference a million dollars in overtime for that now we just got to make sure that we can have enough funding for police presence and that's the that that's my whole point it is police presence that made the difference in both situations so even i told you last week the city of duluth is 
decided they're going the other way. They're going to hire police officers. That's happening all around the country. Yep, cities all over. So, backseaters help us. We're not going to tell you what to do because someone will complain that we're telling you what to do. But you know how to influence your elected officials. Watch that, watch that press conference. You decide. You make up your own mind. There was a couple other, actually, if you're watching the 9 o'clock news tonight, you should probably wrap up before 10 so we can uh, watch the news ourselves. But um, I did a few interviews, kind of making the point, you know, they'll only use 10 to 15 second sound bites, of course. Um, but I know uh, City Council person Jane Prince also participated in a press conference with Dora Jones. And I saw some comments from hers in the paper. So Jane Prince is supportive of some additional police officers. Before it gets too busy here in the next hour, and I'm sure it's going to because things always pick up after eight, we are going to call Dora Jones. And uh, if she's listening, Dora, remember this is just about public safety. We're not going to deviate and get off on other matters. She is a candidate for mayor. She'll be our fourth candidate that we've talked to. That'll leave four of them left. Hopefully we hear from all four. All, all eight, yep. And uh, give Dora a call here and see what she thinks needs to be done. Dora, Dora has uh, got a long history of mentoring young adults mentoring youth in our community. Very successfully. A lot of young ladies have been, you know, had their lives saved by Dora's efforts. Absolutely. Would she, you make us Oh yeah, we're gonna this? stop here. We gotta, well, while Dora's talking, Pat's gonna run in. Well, we'll wait. wait, wait yeah, wait, wait till. You wanna get, I've known, I've known Dora out? since she was a teenager. I'd That's like right. to be here for that. That's right. Well, we're gonna, Pat can get, are you gonna get us a cheese dog? If they've got some. Perfect neighbors out there in North St. Paul took good care of us. So, I'm doing a, a really quiet cheese dog. Because I, I tried to get dinner tonight, but I just couldn't fit it in. Ham and cheese if no cheese dogs? No, Twinkie. Okay, then as soon as he gets back, right we're going to call Dora. And, uh, You need any money? No. I knew the answer to that. So one of the reasons I, I want you to watch the press conference is, um, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that my people call, I guess, fixers, you know, certain, certain people trying to fix problems and they like to actually do constructive things and you know, sometimes that isn't necessary. Some people just want to be heard and listened to. Um, there's Mickey Frost, Mickey Frost walking in there to M and H. No, Mick. Good to see you. Just wanted to say, hey, we're, we're, li we're live on patrol. I don't know if you knew that right now. You're live right we're, now? We're live right now. Oh, okay. We're about, we're about to call Dora, but right. uh, it was a terrible thing that happened yesterday, huh? You know, it's just, we, it's the preventative measures that right. we, we have to take, you know? I mean, for one thing, like, I heard the comment you made is just so true. How can a mayor not want to listen to the advice of experts and people that know? And... That, that, that just doesn't make sense. I mean, we have to learn how to work together. There's too many, you know, people that think that they know it all. And, and at, at this time, nobody knows it all. Right, because if right. everybody knew it all, we wouldn't have these problems. So that, that just shows that maybe a little bit of what you know and a little bit of what I know can come together. And that's how we put this puzzle together to, to fix what's going on in this community. Exactly. exactly. Well said. Well said. That's all we're asking for is, you know, be a team. Everybody take a part of the puzzle. Right? Too. And you and your juvenile work and, you know, helping kids turn the corner, put the guns down and mediate, and then 
you know, but I mean, we're, we're willing to cool things off by being out there. We're willing to put ourselves at risk, law enforcement officers, but we just need enough of them that they're not exhausted. So what are you getting at M&H? What's your favorite here? You know what? I was coming to get a bang. Oh, okay. um, the little energy thing. Yeah, okay. Bang, so I was gonna come in. Well, Pat's. Us little... old guys, we don't get the the big bang. We get the little. We get the Mountain Dews. <laughs> yeah, the little bang. <laughs> well, man, you stay safe right. out here doing what you do, man. I Thanks, appreciate you working. Thanks work a lot. And, and just know, hey, if I, I get there, we got some help coming. Thank just... you. Thank you. Well, that was nice to run into Mickey. He didn't get a chance to dress up for this cameo appearance but oh what do I got here we just got another uh, call by the way the uh, complainant just walked into United Hospital just now Stating that he had wounds from last night at the truck park and he wants to get some treatment for it. So this is, this is what happens. A lot of people get shot. Some of them went to Hennepin County. They drove themselves to the hospital in Hennepin County. Some went to United. Some went to Regions. So we just had a we just had a a mixture of where people went. So. But now we have more showing up today. I don't know. You know, Pat and I have been around a lot of shots fired. But for the average person having to put up with that type of environment. You say hi to Mick? Yes, I did. No cheese dog, but a spicy German sausage. Never seen spicy German sausage. Good dog begins. That means good day. How are you? Uh, it's a, it's a Vita. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to call Dora. And I can eat quietly while Dora's talking. That'll be awesome. We just had a person walk into the hospital over at United that said he got the shots yesterday. Really? You know, this is really a spicy dog. This, I'm you know? the it is, huh? Oh, jeez. How could you do that to me? You make me want to get one. That's... <laughs> then it goes with those spicy dill chips. There you go. All right. Our fourth candidate? You no, know, we had a shooting today also. Four room nine, where is that? On the east side. At, uh... Fifth, at Fifth Street? Or where we're... we're where the shots were, but no one was hit, right? There was one where someone was hit. Well, that might have been a different one. All right. Oh, there's Mike. You could send me the dangerous condition on White Bears, Maryland. Good evening, hey Bob. Hello, Dora Jones. How are you today? Well, you know, Bob, it's been a real hectic, busy day for me. Yep. I, I, I've been, I did two press conferences. I had two campaign meetings, so I've been extremely busy, Bob. Well, you're always a hard worker, Dora, so... Tell us what you think we got to do different or tell us what you think hasn't been done in terms of crime and public safety here in St. Paul. Well, Bob, one of the things is that, I, you know, I don't sugarcoat the message, right? And so one of the things that we absolutely have to do to change this needle is be more aggressive. This gun violence is aggressive. These young people and older people um, this, uh, are aggressive with this gun violence, and we have to meet them where they're at. We have to be just as aggressive with our message and with our actions. We cannot no longer sit idly by and just be okay with doing the bare minimum. We gotta do a little bit more than what we have been doing. We have to 
um, uh, worked with uh, John Choi, the public defenders, the judges, to say enough is enough and we need more stiffer penalties and I don't care what they look like. They can be black, blue, striped, or polka dot. We've got to save lives. People are putting um, money and finances in, 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 before lives. We can no longer do that. Um, our current administration, that's exactly what he's doing when he un, when he defunds our police department. When he doesn't respect the Ramsey County Sheriff's work that they're out here doing as well. We can no longer afford to do that. We need to be one unity in, in around public safety as we possibly can be. Everybody needs to be in, 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 in sync with trying to help with this public, um, with this safety. It just baffles me that we now, the gun violence usually, and I'm gonna keep it 100 with you, the gun violence has been usually erupting in black community, black bars, black neighborhoods. Now it has escalated and it has trickled down um, and like a, uh, a domino effect. And it's and it's starting to reap and, and seep into other areas. And, Dor and now, Dor Dora, just just so in case some of our listeners don't know, Dora is a black woman who has been very involved in the community. So I don't want them to think you're you're necessarily uh, picking oh, on I'll give pick, them a quick, pick, picking on yeah, an I opposite. Give them a quick yeah, background. Yeah, on you yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am African American woman. Um, I've been working in St. Paul community. Um, for over 17 years uh, working with young adults around employment, housing, education, college, all of that to try to help curb what it looks like in our community. Um, I've done that for over 16 years in the city of St. Paul on Rice Street. Um, so I'm not foreign to this. And then also my gun violence, Guns Down St. Paul initiative started six years ago, Bob. Six years ago. And so I already knew that it was going to start escalating at some point. And now we're at the boiling point. Yep. But if they didn't listen to me six years ago and start putting measurable, um, measurable, uh, uh, things in place that help us, we wouldn't be in the condition we're in today. Um, shot spotter could have helped us. Yep. Um, you know, one of the things that I would like to see is mandate that all bars have security. Um, you know, I tell the story, Bob, and I've told you this story before. If you got, for instance, six or four or five police officers sitting in front of Walmart, People are more likely not to go to Walmart and steal. Yeah. That's the same concept, the same mindset that we got to take on these streets. If you got a couple cops in high, high traffic areas at the high, um, at the at the hours that you know it's going to be high traffic, and you got police in the areas at that time doing their job, going in and engaging with the people, then maybe we would they would not be so quick to pull a gun if they see officers are in there strolling through the bar, talking to the people, engaging with the people. Yep. Then I guarantee, especially at the time yep. where um, it's closing time, they've been drinking, so we know alcohol escalates people's mentality to want to get ignorant and violent. And if you got officers in them areas, in them bars, walking through the bars, talking to the people, I guarantee you, people are not going to be so quick to pull a gun and go to shoot. But because we have defunded our police department, um, our current administration is not saying he defunded them, but anytime you take 9.2 million, a million, or any kind of money from your police department that is absolutely defunding your police department. Right. One of the things I said today at that press conference is that the city of St. Paul and any major city in this country, the biggest budget that you should have is public safety, your police department. How can you take away from that? Because potholes, rec centers, all that is gonna matter if we ain't safe. And so to me, that is the biggest budget that we need to be pushing for. We need more officers on the street, and I don't care what nobody say about um, no more police officers. Yes, we do, because we need to be safe, first and foremost. That is the most critical. And when I get into that seat, because I'm going to get in that seat, Bob, uh, the only person that's going to be able to get in that seat is me. And when I get in there, I am going to make sure 
that we can absolutely uh, de-escalate some of this gun violence by one-on-one -on -one talking, one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, assessments with the with first the police, also with these folks that are in custody, that got jail, that are in jail with gun violence on their on their background. Them are the ones we got to talk to and reach. Yeah. and make sure we change their mindset. Because I don't care about, we can send up here and give them everything in the world. We can give them housing, jobs, open rec centers, but if we don't change the mindset, we are just we are just spinning our wheels because their mindset has not changed. And that's what we gotta work on and penetrate the mindset of these young people and even older people, families. So one of the things that's gonna happen once I win that seat is that uh, there's no more pat on the on on the hand, and let your mom come get you. No more of that. If you want to do adult crimes, you're carjacking, you're doing gun violence. You gonna have to stand up and, and suffer the consequences as if you were a young adult. We can no longer have these parents come and get them. And also, Bob, we've got to figure out how to make sure that these parents are are, are held accountable as well for the young people. These older people that are doing gun violence, they already know the consequences. And that and there and needs to be tougher penalties for that. And we've got to shout that from the top of our city. That if you come to our city, that this is what's gonna happen. And if you're coming from another city, one of the things Bob I wanted to say, you come from another city that is erupting gun violence like Chicago and St. Louis, and you come to our city with that same mentality, you're not welcome here. We got to put in a contract with you that you cannot come to this city with the same mentality of the same gun violence, the same dope dealing mentality. We're not going to accept that in our city no more. Either you're going to do right or you're going to go somewhere else. Because and, my thing is that. And my Dora, thing is that, Dora, just let me interrupt you for a minute because yeah. um, I, I, we sense your passion. And that's one of the things that we love passion. Of course, your and your conversation about Walmart that, you know, Pat and I have been. I guess preaching that same thing. No kidding. I, well, it's sent your passion, but I want to say one thing. I'm sitting here listening. I'm watching the clock because you know we give each candidate ten minutes, and Thanks. you only Thanks. used eight. Well, I got you, thirty more seconds. No, no, you got two, you got two minutes, but I'm pausing you, so this you still got two more minutes. But I'm thinking to myself, I've heard more from you about crime in eight minutes now tonight than I've heard from our mayor in three years. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Right. And Bob and Pat, I'm going to be honest with you. I was at that uh, press conference and, and it supposed to start at 445. He didn't get there to 510. So that means he wasted our time. He had us sitting there in the cold. He had the press there waiting on him. And I got up there in front of the mic and I said, and this is what we get, a missing mayor. He's not here at the mic at 445. This is unacceptable. How dare you put these people on hold like that with no respect? You don't even care about being on time to address this gun violence in our city. Well, hold, let's, he, let's pause for a minute. What did you hear? What did you hear him say? He said absolutely nothing. He gave us the rhetoric and the runaround that he's always given us. He didn't say nothing about how he's going to handle it, what he's going to do. He had no, he had no answers for us, and he, and he doesn't. And that's why I say he needs to be reaching out and asking people who know how to get this done for help. But he refuses because he's so arrogant. Right. He don't want to ask nobody for help when he needs to be asking for help and supporting the help that he already has. Oh, which all right. is Graham County Sheriff Department and St. Paul Police. Hey, so now we are down to 30 seconds. 20, actually. Can you give us your okay, website? So can you give us, Dora, can you give us your website so people can go look up more information on you? Yeah, it's Dora Jones Robinson dot uh, org. Spell that out and for us. Spell that out for them, Dora, in case they don't know how to spell it. D D O R A J O N E S R O B I N S O N dot org. And I'm uh, the only woman on the ballot, and I'm running for St. Paul Mayor, and I hope I get to vote on November second and vote for change and improvement for our city. And I think I'm the only one that can get it done. I'm the only one that can beat Jim Paul. Well, one thing's for sure, you represented yourself well here tonight. So thank you very much for taking our call and for sharing that. We, we, thank you, Bob. We, we, we appreciate your passion.
Yeah, yeah thank, thank, thank you, and thank you for your passion, as always. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And you know that, that we're going to get some change done on November 2nd with Dora Jones-Robinson at the helm. Thanks, Dora. Have a great night. You guys have Thanks. a great night. You Bye. 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 Good night. And Bob, thank yeah. you so much for your work on LOP. That is critically important to our city. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Dora. Thanks thank a lot. you. Bye-bye. You bet. Bye-bye. Well, that was a stim passionate, stimulating yeah. conversation. You're not kidding. You're not kidding. Okay. Well, well we're getting, those, each of those 10 minutes, we should cut them out, put them all together. We got some interesting comments from all four of those candidates, didn't we? Most definitely. Maybe someone out there will do a, wouldn't be bad to do a collage of oh, all of our mayoral candidates. We still got a four more. Of course, the mayor himself. I think there's a guy named Bill Hosko. I'm trying to think of the other names. I, you guys I'll post them on here if you're thinking of them. I know there's a gentleman that starts with an L. I don't really know him. Who else is on there? There's got to be one more that I'm missing. I'm, I don't mean to insult the person by missing him. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll tell you who the four are that we're going to talk to. All right, we're going to go on patrol for a little bit here. It's, what is it, 809, Pat? Yes, it is. 809, if you uh, if you haven't shared this broadcast yet with your friends and stuff, we wish you would. We're looking for a carjack car. And we just got word that the victim that walked into the hospital now changed his story, actually got shot at the nickel joint. We so do. that was two people shot at the nickel joint after the uh, shooting at the truck park. And there, there was, it was reported 50, over 50 shots were fired. And actually, Pat and I did come to work last night after the shooting, just if you're wondering. Um, and we both came in and it just, we just decided so our squads, our county squads were covering St. Paul because all the St. Paul cars were tied up. La yeah, last night, Ramsey County Sheriffs were taking the 911 calls. Maplewood Police were taking 911 calls in St. Paul. Um, and White Bear Lake Police were taking call calls in St. Paul. And on a side note, I feel obligated to say this. They didn't wait to be invited. They just stepped up and filled the void. They did request our help. Negative. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah but we I didn't yeah. get we didn't get a formal invitation from the council president. But everybody was on the way here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Before that wow. happened, because we work as a team. That's what's great about law enforcement. We work as a team. We work as a team. Paul Langfield. That I'm sorry. Can you repeat the last part? Yeah. Yeah. Paul Langfield. Paul, Paul Langfield. Yeah. Lang well, Langfield, and that was the one with the L. So what else we got? Langfield. Hosko. Hosko. Um. Carter. Mayor Carter. There's one other one, though, isn't there? Have we, have we done four or five? We've done four. Yeah, so there's eight candidates. It's kind of embarrassing, isn't it? Just, none of the backseaters have told us who the other ones are. Someone just send us the list of the ones. The election is in November. Anyhow, yes, county squads rolled in, handled Maplewood, came in, a lot of different agencies came in and helped. Yeah, there were uh, several shots fired calls this afternoon. They believe that the uh, victim who went to the hospital came from the east side one but yeah. there were there were shots fired calls all over town and by the way when pat and i come in now that pat's sworn in he comes in by himself and uh we work two cars just so we can cover twice as much area yes indeed and alex was out last night yeah. somebody said they don't want to call alex like action or a-team they want to have a vegetable <laughs> What, what, avocado, Alex? I like that. No, that wasn't their suggestion. There's apparently some vegetable starts with an A. I never heard of it. Somebody threw at us. Oh, Alpine or 
Personality is always in action. So we are on the east side of St. Paul, over here on uh, Maryland Avenue. Oh, that's bright. Yeah, you can put it in dark mode, you know. Our friend KG Wilson was at that uh, press conference to do, and KG, if you're listening, my apologies for not hooking up with you at your place of employment. It's constantly on my mind, KG. Just been very, very busy time at the sheriff's office right now. But I promise, when I do, I'll bring you some chicken. So, you know, okay, KG, I got to. I got to chick- mute this. We got so okay. we need to go on. Hold on one second. His favorite meal when he's working at at the Holiday Gas Station is Popeye's chicken. So I'll get you some. Go ahead, Pat. All right. This call has not been dispatched. We're not going to say where we're going or what it's about at this time. So, what we are obviously going to one. Eight minutes old. Yeah, and those of you that are what's what's the first three to play? GDB. Okay. Those of you that are on YouTube, you know, I don't even know how you share or get other friends to watch YouTube, but if there's a way, <laughs> please do. I'm gonna second to my location at second and Murray, please. <laughs> No, I can't help get my I can't get my mind off Vanessa's mom Rachel. No, I can't. I just uh, no, I, I can't. Just, you know, you just see the brokenness of a person's face losing a child, and um, we all owe it to her to make sure we can make sure that never happens again. Or, solve that crime if you're listening and you're part of the street rod group and you know who was firing the guns on that June day just remember the face of a mother who lost their child is should be in your dreams and haunt you forest to cypress yeah. it's moving or what uh, it's in the driveway oh, in the dri- no, I, think I, maybe it's I, I think right before we get there we should let them know well, let's do a drive by Okay. You, won't, you won't know it's us. Okay. Is there a person in it, do we think? You know, it's unclear. Alex, if you're listening, we're heading to that pending call. At 998, we won't say the street. But we're headed to the pending call. Unknown, if occupied. You said? Yep. It's got to be the corner. Oh, somebody's coming. Anybody take it yet or not? Nope. It's probably Alex. All right. Well, is there a driveway in the front or are we talking driveways in the back? It didn't specify, What's so I'm... All right. Well, that's... This has got to be 10, 1,000 here. So, it got to be... It's got to be right here, Pat. There's, yep. There it is. Yep. I 
guess we're just gonna block it in, right? Yep. You see it? Nope. No, it's gotta be on this side. Isn't this uh well one thing this is isn't this beach? Yeah. It's Margaret. Oh it's Margaret. Oh shoot, I thought you guys I don't know I don't know why I was thinking beach. No, I was thinking it was beach. <laughs> Next block down. Exit yeah, stage red. Is there a driveway there or not? No. Oh wait a no. no. I don't think so. It's right there. Okay, we'll let that print for now. You got your light? Unoccupied. Okay, there it is. Unoccupied though. Unless they're crashed out. Well, check us out here. Twenty four hundred, we're out at nine ninety eight Margaret with that stolen. Don't think it's occupied. Okay, we're going to show you how the steering column on this has been torn apart, which you're able to do on older cars to steal a vehicle. They apparently broke out this back right window to get in. You can see the broken glass down there. Take you around to the other side to see the broken column. The owner's there with us, the resident here. She said she left a while ago at about five o'clock and came back and it was here. And Alex, who's here, has researched it already and saw it fled from White Bear Lake ah. a little, just a little while ago. And I don't know how much you can see it, but there's a black, looks like uh, looks like one of those masks, COVID masks, over the broken steering column to, uh, in the hopes that law enforcement doesn't notice it right away if they approach the car. So, the thief, after fleeing from White Bear Police, apparently came here and just dumped it in some random person's driveway. So yeah, this is a confirmed stolen vehicle that fled from White Bear Police. And it'll be recovered. And the vehicle and contents processed for DNA and or fingerprints. Twenty-seven fifty-five is out on Margaret. Also,
And there's no need for us to clear the house. We are speaking to the homeowner who called it in. Quite likely the thief is someone who lives in the neighborhood here. Uh oh, there's our buddies. Hey, can you guys do me a favor? There is no such thing as grand theft auto in Minnesota. It is simply auto theft. And the value of the vehicle, uh, well, actually the value of the vehicle does come into play, but it's a felony regardless. clear. There was another strange vehicle that the homeowner didn't recognize in the area that we checked out and is clear.
Alright, take care guys. What's gonna be the caption of this video? The old light. <laughs> be safe. Pat had to buy another one. <laughs> but he lost his little one. He lost, it? He lost I, one I, of his I little I lost the identical one to this. I had to replace it. Free? What's that? They don't send them free to you guys? Oh no. Oh no. No. Oh, oh, no. no. no, 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 no. <laughs> well, they should give us a Durango then, but they don't do that either. See ya. <laughs> Capital Transparency Group. I it's got a different name because Tony had the I don't know. Anyhow, they did some good video outside of uh outside of the uh, truck park last night, but I didn't like how how he talked about one of the St. Paul police officers and apparently they have a little history. Uh, Which is, I'm glad to know there's some history because otherwise it just seemed like generic rudeness. But someday I'll get the whole story. So that car was stolen. It was in a it was spotted by Wiper Lake Police Department and fled from them. Twenty-seven fifty-five and twenty-four hundred are clear of market. Twenty-seven fifty-six of the elk torn. So the reason we didn't tell you, we didn't know if someone was in the car. We didn't know if they were listening to live on patrol, but that was a stolen. It was hasn't been there very long. that camera work coming out of the car okay uh fair i've got to i've <laughs> got to work on my manipulation of it a well, little bit well the light adjustment is hard too yeah did you shut it off by accident or no no <laughs> you have to be scared well no you know sometimes it does that when you touch a button you don't mean to touch shots fired in mounds view 12 shots kids screaming really county long wait a second Copy. That was a different room, different incident. That one was already dealt with. This is going to be a different room in relation to the truck park shooting. Copy. One time is on the evening. That's just old. But what do we got? Long H Long Lake Copy. Park? Uh, Long Lake Road and County Road H2. 12 shots three to four minutes ago. Kids screaming. Didn't see anything. Well, we're a long ways. We won't head that way until we find out if it's a legit... Pending time? Yeah. I didn't realize. I forgot it was pending at first. Well, well that's not good. No. We've got kids screaming that shouldn't be pending that long. No. But. Like everybody else, they're shorthanded. That's why we're here. Yeah, this is the scary part about the defund the police movement is as they defund the police and the crime goes up, they still try to blame the police. Yep. And I, I, I can't count them. Well, there weren't that many, but there were some comments that uh, pushing the falsehood that police don't prevent crime and police don't deter crime and There's the presence of police break, does both. We were just down there and this at 
It came, 11 51 Fifth Street was hit earlier today. So, the exact address, I think they said 1058. 1058 East 5th. And we are on. We practically drove by it. <laughs> One shot, bullet through the front of the house and into the living room. You know those one-shot ones are almost, what's that, what it, there's a white SUV with no plates, I wonder, we'll see if they see a suspect vehicle, because we they, are, they, uh, they saw no vehicle, we are on the main escape road, you might change it to a reference, uh, case over, keep the roll, the no, 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 uh, and you can still use the Clear. bar as the address. south from where we were. Not very far. Not blocks. very far at all. I don't know where that guy's going. Do you want me to go to United? Yes, please. Copy, what am I going for? I'm not sure. We're, Clear right. we're right on the corner here where the shots are fired. It's right on the, it's the corner house of Earl and uh, Fifth Street. And that was Beach. Margaret's right here. We were one block east of us where we just were. There's Sixth Street. There's Sixth Street. So one more block. We were surprised we didn't hear it. Yeah. Well, we were. We did kind of go north a little bit. Yeah, that's true. Might have heard it. Sometimes is is this the right street? Fifth or what are we? No, what is that? Fifth. Fifth. Oh. This should be it. It's right here. What's oh, the house right here? I guess. So this is the house that just had the round go through it. We're gonna go up and take a quick look at the uh, at the bullet. Verify. Once you check, tell them we're here. Twenty-seven, 27 and twenty-four hundred are on Fifth Street. Can we get a call back and have the cops come to the front door and let us have this? Copy, stand by one. Three eight four. Three eight four. I report from nine ten and three three seven three three. Copy.
375 here, Crouch, if you're stepping out. get a picture of it. It's uh Three twelve, can you have three eight three go to four? Obvious on a shell casing, but I'll leave the detail so it's for you guys. Okay. I'll tell you what, though. Don't go. 3666 Tango is quite in the road, King Kim, sir. Don't offend me, man. 366 Tango, go again. We call for you as quite in the, if they are in the road, they can cancel. 366 Tango, copy. A squad that's not on scene on 5th Street can cancel at 2041.
I was going to say, I'll give you my If we're ever getting beat up, if you guys going to come here and help us. Absolutely. Well, well. Now we love having you, okay? That's what we want I might, I might put my tripod down in there. By law, hey, you're gonna hey, by law we have to. You're it's gonna law. Thank you. First week in November. Hey, but by the way, Do I gotta talk you, to Mike? did you guys see what happened here? No. Let's just talk about what happened. We just got here at the same time. There's, there's a bullet in there. So bullet hole through the frame of the window leading into the living room and then a bullet hole in the far wall of the living room just above head height. Head height for a tall person. People down at the market right ahead of us here on the right heard the shot, heard a car taking off, but no one saw a car. That is a scary thing. You saw that bullet embedded. That was like a long bullet, too. I don't know what that is. Looks like it might be... I don't know. It wasn't a normal... It looked like a... I can't say what it was. Whew. So... Through the porch window, out the porch, side porch window, through the house, and into a wall inside the house, about six and a half feet high. Yep. Uh, that doesn't sound. That's as terrifying as anything to have a bullet come through your house. Yeah, it is. Jesus. Right at the corner of Fifth and Earl. We, you'll notice we're talking to these uh, Capitol Police Transparency. 22. 22. Gentlemen that follow us around. We don't really mind being videotaped, to be honest. Not at all. Um, I just asked them if we got a, ever got in trouble. If they... On the break, and maybe a canine to start for a bird 3976 or Cape Street number one. A male trying to break the door down. He just broke into the window upstairs. He's a black male. Well, we can go to that. Six feet, yeah. Yeah, that way. Are you going to clear us from this one? Yeah. Yep. Clear for a minute. Copy. 2755 and 2400 clear from 5th and on the way to that one. Oh, you had Copy. to, you just had to just tell them where we're going, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what if something else happens on the way, Pat? Clear. 3, four, two. Clarify that female is now the same. The male ran up the stairs and broke a window. And then she disconnected. He's trying to call back to get more clarification. Is that the same call? Yep. I got it. Increasing level of danger. Yep. He ran up the stairs. What'd you say? 976 Arcade just between north Case of, and Jix. Just north of Case there, yep. a little bit. And remember there's 480 numbers to... Um, Clear. I like my old my car better. I can just Yeah, I like, I like that. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, exactly. So... Unfortunately, the caller keeps hanging up on the operator. We're gonna have to go. We're gonna have to work more than one night a week to get all eight candidates in. Did anybody send us the other four names? You know, we've been so busy. Uh, they very well may have. So we've had Mickey, Dino, Guerin, Abu, Naim, and Dora. Remember, case is 960 north, and we're going to 976. Even numbers are on the east side of the street. So, roughly, 
These short blocks are 30, so we're going about half a short block up on Arcade when we get there. This intersection looks familiar. Sure does. Remember that? Sure do. Clear. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's when I used the speaker mounted to the oh, yeah. floor as a brake. Yeah. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> Your mileage may vary. Check if there's anything in the alley there before we go up. I bet. I would think that's probably the, the place. Probably the place. Alright. Alright, alright. Oh, same Paul car here? Yep. You got anybody with you? No, not yet. We'll go to the back. All right. Officer Conrad, one of St. Paul's finest. K-9 officer. What apartment number are we going to? Uh, <laughs> did tell you what apartment was, uh... Oh, he asked the question already. Right. And Tom didn't give their apartment, but the apartment that the mail was going into was number one. Twenty forty nine. Twenty seven fifty five and twenty four hundred were out. Is one the one he was going into as in he lives there or the one he was breaking into? The one he was breaking into. We do have a broken window here, but it doesn't appear that anybody made entry inside. 633 copy. If there is a broken window, it does not appear that anyone made entry at 2050. Three and four. Three and four. Any squads coming my way can slow. Probably any squads that are in route to arcade can slow at 2052.
Well, back seaters, it doesn't look like entry was actually made. Although it's possible, there's three St. Paul cars here checking. The door that he broke the glass out, he did not get made, he did not make entry. The callers heard. Four sixty one West Maryland shots fired. There's a shots fired up up there earlier today at Maryland and Norton. Well, four forty four Maryland. There's been death in the past. Yep. Shots fired at four sixty one West Maryland. That's the apartment building across the street. Anyhow, um, they're going to check to see if he made entry in a different apartment, but it doesn't look like it, the best that we can tell, right? Correct. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah. Sorry, we don't always leave you at the best view. We try to leave the windows open so you can hear some things, but it's, uh, it's not always convenient to just try to put the car in the best view when we want to be tactically in a better I'll position. Yeah. Well, I think we should slide over to Central there, Pat. I'm waiting in a black piece off. Reference bombs trying to get to the apartment. Oh, this looks huge. Uh, did you give me a Mountain View or not? I sure did. Is that, that it? That's oh, it. you even put it in your 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 cup holder. That's right, because I care. You're the best. Three six two. Three six two. Close up that call where that shot was fired into that lady's house. You realize if that, from the angle that that was fired from the street, if you were to change that by four or five degrees down, yep, somebody's dead. Exactly. Somebody's dead. Exactly. It's a nice family too there. In fact, all the people we run into are really quality people. I was thinking that quality people that deserve quality protection, right? For sure. I'm going to put this back. Yeah. 375 Barranco, he's on the second floor, south side of the building. Got it. Twenty-seven. 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 And twenty-four hundred clear from our gate. Copy twenty-seven. So you notice now that Pat's a deputy. He's always using his own number. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I came to the realization that I'm logged onto the computer under that number. Yeah. I think in the future we can put ourselves out there electronically. Let's see if you can figure that one out. I, I yeah, I think I can. Okay.
you're just joining us, uh, welcome to Live on Patrol. Uh, my name's Bob Fletcher. I have the pleasure of serving as the sheriff in Ramsey County here, the capital county of Minnesota. The city of St. Paul is about half the county across the river from the city of Minneapolis. I'm sure you've all heard of the city of Minneapolis because that's where the Vikings came back with 33 seconds to defeat the Detroit Lions. Today. Hallelujah. So you got to picture this game. The Vikings are playing like they really don't want to win. They're just playing like we don't want to lose. They're not really being aggressive on offense. But they got a seven-point lead in the fourth quarter. They got the ball on their own 20-yard line. All they got to do, Detroit Lions have no timeouts. All they got to do is run the clock out. Get a first down and it's all over automatically. Two minutes, 12 seconds left. And so they hand off. I'm going to leave the running back's name out of it because he played so well. And they fumble on a sweep. And so Detroit gets the ball back on the 12-yard line. And, of course, Detroit takes it in and scores. I think like 37 seconds left in the game. And instead of going for one to tie it up, since Detroit hasn't won a game all year, the coach says, the heck with that. I'm not going to play to tie. I'm going to play to win. I haven't won one all year. So he goes for two. And, in fact, they complete a short pass. He rolls out, completes a pass, and they go for two. And they're up by one point. And you know the Vikings have lost several one, two, three-point games. Right. So here we go again is what we're thinking. So they kick off to the Vikings. And for some unbeknownst reason, the Viking return man decides to return the ball from the one yard line. Point, the will be following the vehicle to five south. Instead of just letting it go in the end zone and save yourself three or four seconds to get it at the 25, you the vehicle to And he only returns it like back to the 20. Five south, but he burns four seconds off the clock. So now we're down to 33 seconds, something like that. And so we throw a pass, and the first pass is a six yard pass. Well, you're not gonna get any, and he's tackled. We gotta use our last time out now, okay? Okay. We got, you're not gonna get down the field. You gotta get in field goal range. So next he throws an amazing pass to Adam Thielen. By the way, you know, I'm a big fan of Adam Thielen. He's a really nice kid. I, I've met him and his family a few times and just just a wonderful human being. His, his wife and kids are great. I'm not going to tell you exactly how I know him, but just big fan. And, and he has the best ball focus of any receiver in the league in terms of maintaining focus while the ball is coming over either shoulder or whatever. He hasn't caught a ball, he hasn't caught a ball all game, and it's not his fault. They just weren't aggressive. But he catches his ball and brings it, I don't know, to the 36-yard line or something. Okay. There's Now there's 10 seconds left. Nine, eight, seven. So they run up there, and they spike the ball with three seconds left. Okay. I'll come back. i got to finish this story. This is a more important story than, than that call. So <laughs> they spike the ball with three seconds left, and they bring their field goal kicker in. Joseph is his name. I don't really know him. But you know the bad luck we've had with field goal kickers, right? Yeah, we have. So everybody in this thing, everybody in the place is thinking, don't hit the upright. <laughs> and he, the kid kicked that thing through with no time left, and they won the game. All right. At, at, on two plays, they brought the, Cousins brought him down on two plays with the, the Thielen reception being the big one. Nice. And the Vikings won. Nice. And my son, Bobby, and his friend were at the game. Oh, nice. And they got to watch an amazing Lucky kid. Amazing ending, ending to the game. You can get tickets now online. I'm surprised, but I think the reason is, Asama I don't although I don't think she was Somali. Uh, the, the, the reason you can get them is people aren't too robust about going downtown. See, I ask him if we can try that food. Whoop. Hey, is this take? Is this takeout? Are you bringing the food over here or not? Takeout? What are we having? Ch chicken, French fries. What do we got in that box there? If you're, if you're hungry, you hey, that that chicken's not worth shooting 
Sh firing guns, is it? Did you hear any guns? Oh. Did you hear a shot? Oh, no, not over here. Oh, okay. Not oh, like this way? Why not? <laughs> Smart man. Smart. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the help. Appreciate it. See how you can lighten up the mood a little bit. Absolutely. That's that's what we're all about. Somebody's honking at somebody. Well, we're going to go back behind 461, Maryland, where's where the call was, 461, which is, this is 455 and 461 across the street there. Um, well, I'll check down here first. And just to see if there's any other indication of shots fired. Get to the parking lot this way, but I just thought I'd check it out. Still hear those guys, huh? Yep. The St. Paul guard might be here. 375. We're en route to 2 Detox with a dumbbell. Copy. Well, he's let me go. That's really strange. We're 661. We can take the shot away from them. 3661, copy. We have another squad system. 306 for copy. One caller hit an Earl. Heard four shots. Another one? That fifth street over there off of Earl. 304, put my call back in. I mean, I'll Some, copy. Something going on. 306, copy. Oh, copy, engine 105. Something going on. We'll let, oh, they're turning. Check the eye. 366, we now have a second caller oh, on the shots fired, stating after Austin left the address, they heard four more shots, unknown further. We should just sat out there at yeah, no fifth, kidding. huh? Oops. Well, this is 461 in the back here that we're at. This position is Sergeant Schultz. <laughs> I know nothing. I see I nothing. See nothing. Uh, do, 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 do. We've been here a couple times. Yep, we sure have. 366 six, Tango. 366 six, Tango. With all these shots fired, it's kind of in the same area. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. But one of the suspect vehicles was an older model white Chevy Malibu. Turn that up a little bit. That's what he told no me. rear bumper. That's what he told me. That was me. the one on Fifth and. When we were in the house, he said there were two cars shooting at each other, and one was a white Malibu. White Malibu, no copy. rear bumper. At twenty one oh six. Somebody said your the interview you did is on Channel Nine right now. Did they put the skinny lens on? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Did they put the skinny lens on? He just walked out of that building. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we found out from that driving instructor you don't have to phys physically look back anymore. <laughs> Three six six Tango. We have an additional caller. Right, so 1155 Fourth Street. They heard Nelly yelling and leaving the area. It sounded like it was coming from Hold across on. the street Hold on. from the apartments from that address. Uh, Hold on. 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 So right now we're gonna see if this buddy of ours, where'd he go? He I think left. I saw him he cross, left. I think he crossed the street. JJ sure not. We're giving out a friendly award tonight. You guys win the friendly award. Did you know that? Check it out. 
McDonald's or Holiday? Uh, holiday. Here you go. Ten dollar gift card from Holiday. Holiday. You all want Holiday? Holiday? You're not scamming us, are you? These no. work. Those work. Well, if they <laughs> if, call the police if they're scamming at work, okay? Yeah. That's Holiday. Yep, Holiday. These are from the people that watch us. We're live on patrol all the time on Fridays. People they they want to set they want to spread some goodwill. How about a McDonald's one for the other one? How, how about a McDonald's one? For, yeah, there you go. Best it's, fries around. It's not as good. It's not as good as what you're eating there, but you know. You Absolutely. There you go, guys. There you go. Good to see you guys. So. Just building a little goodwill there, back seaters. Absolutely. Thank you. That's how we. I'm sure that we'll have some backup if we're ever here in a. Well, we're not close to that shots fired because that's where we left, but we'll head that back that way unless. Might happen again. Well, it sounds like it's gonna. Unless they move over to this side of town. Pat, you know what? What? Guess what? Tell me. It's only 59 degrees. Can you feel it? I can definitely feel it. I had to, I had to turn the air off. When, well, you when you weren't I, looking. I was going to say it. I'm going to get a haircut. 366 Tango. 366 Tango. Is there any clarification of what apartments they're referring to? Yeah, right one. I'll have the TC call back to get better clarification. Got to drive down Rice Street, though. You know we're headed that way. Just to... You're welcome. Oh, one of the shootings today, the victim was dropped off by a brown Porsche Cayenne. No. And then it took off from the hospital and ended up, I believe it crashed into a bus shelter at Marion and University. Was it the same and, one? And, and kept going. You know, I haven't been able to get oh. confirmation yet, but we had a uh, brown Porsche Cayenne carjacked, carjacked on Friday. Up in the suburbs. And uh, then today they drop off a gunshot victim and flee from the hospital. It's all right. connected, backseaters. Yep. It's all connected. That's why targeting a very small number of three, people. Three, please Delta, most of whom. Whiskey 153 and Colorado Delta Bravo Oscar 646 to the call. Copy can make a big difference. I'm going to put this on one. Okay. Can you get some more officers down here, please? There's maybe two. Where's that at? I'm sorry, can you say that again? More officers. Can you get some more officers down here, please? Just two, maybe? What? Can I get two more spots at 438 North please? It's down at the North Dade right, place. Sometimes the mental health of the people there can cause them to get a little bit dangerous. Is that the guy on the bike? I'm not sure, if, not sure if it's the guy carrying the flowers or the guy on the bike. Hey, let us know on the comments, Pat, and have to watch him how... Oh, the stories were yeah, about the truck again. park. Hi, sir. We're probably going to wrap up about 10 o'clock tonight, by the way. We've we got to get back to work. How you doing? How's it going? All right. We got, we got nothing for you. I love your shirt there. Is that Putty Cat? Putty Cat? And be calling us Tom, oh, that's Tom and Jerry? Love it. Love it. Love it. Isn't there a new Tom and Jerry movie coming out or something? Or? I just missed it, huh? 
Oh. I'm waiting for it to show up on Xfinity. <laughs> you what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should put a pirate shirt on instead for pirating. I love. I love a fit, athletic guy wearing a gentle shirt. I'm fit and athletic. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was uh, chubby. No. <laughs> Don't listen to what she's telling you. Don't listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, wasn't that terrible what happened at the truck park bar last night? Yeah, I just heard about it. Terrible. Horrible. You guys down there? After, uh, after, after, the after the fact. After the fact? Yeah, I just heard about it. Unbelievable. Yeah. St. Paul has turned into Minneapolis the last uh, Well, I'm not going to I'm not gonna agree or disagree with you, but I'll say we're on the wrong path. Yeah, we're, we're, we we got to make a change. We're on the wrong path. It really is. Where, where do you folks live? Way out. I work here. Oh, you do? Okay. okay. What do you do here? Okay, good. Do you give a good stiff pour? You know, we All go right. way back with the Bourne family. Way back. Us. We started in the 70s when this was... When, Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. You think? You, exactly. Yeah, they are. You're right. Give that young woman a rose. Give she her, deserves it. You yeah. know, a rose by any other name. You're right. Tell him. Uh huh. Tell him. Uh huh. Tell me this lady deserves a rose. Hey, who died on 1022? Who died on 1022? Okay, sorry about that. Very sorry. Sorry about that. All right, Take care, you guys. <laughs> nice people. Yeah. Not very crowded there tonight, which everybody's probably decided maybe staying home tonight isn't that bad. Right? Yep. I think a lot of people are staying in tonight because of that. Well, we will be back some extra nights this week. Make sure we get all those candidates in. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be happy until I. Oh, not where did my phone go? I guarantee you, it's here. I know you took a picture. I don't know why you keep stealing my phone. <laughs> and I always have to do a disclaimer. Just listen up for it. That's definitely here. Well, imagine that, Pat. What's this white wire? <laughs> When we talk about doing a midweek, I've discovered we always have to do a disclaimer. That is our intention. That is not a promise. We never know what the week is going to bring. As you all know, this is a very unpredictable profession. Well, the thing you can do is help us keep this public safety agenda the top of everybody's concern in both cities. And you know the referendum in Minneapolis there, which essentially eliminates the police department. It says you can hire police, but it eliminates the department of the police. You know our feelings about that, of course. But uh, just help us continue to try to move the needle, as Dora said, move the needle toward a safer community. Absolutely. It's going to take some time. It's not going to be done overnight by any stretch of the imagination, but the public needs to know that the policymakers care and the business people need to know that there's some backup there. So that's the goal in the next couple of weeks. Make sure the, the public knows that someone cares.
going to pull into Holiday and then I'm going to figure out who that eighth candidate is. Now that he's become a deputy, he's not an analyst. He doesn't analyze that for me. I got it. I got it. on that can, do I? All four cars, all five cars are white in the line I love here. something. It's a strange deal. It's like, I feel like we're in the Matrix. Remember the Matrix? Where strange things like that would happen? Mm -hmm. There's the Oracle. Assalamu alaikum. Love holiday. This, this is a nice outfit. Oh yeah, you think? All right, so let's just get it straight here. Melvin Carter, Mickey Frost, Dino Guerin, Bill Hosko, Dora Jones Robinson, Paul Langenfeld, Abu Naim. Oh, here's one we didn't know. Scott Evans Wergen. Scott, we'd love to hear from you. So send Pat, Scott. A message on Messenger. Paul Langenfeld, I ran into you at the fair. I think you said you were interested. So I'll send Pat your contact information. Bill Hosko, I know uh, you're interested, so we'll get you on one of our one of our lives tonight. And of course, the mayor, you're always welcome to come on and talk for 10 minutes about public safety initiatives. My goodness, it's Amy Jensen's birthday. No way. Looks like it. I'm gonna. 734 I'm... Ottawa, what's the call there? 735, that's where those stolen have been showing up. Domestic. I'm gonna. Mute this just a okay. second. Let's go over the east side. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Or something down there? Yeah. Everything good? say we haven't stepped foot in the west sector yet. No, we haven't. But I really should say we haven't rolled the tire in the west sector yet. <laughs> Roll the tire. Well,
Glad we got to talk to a couple survivors from last night. That was yes. nice. Yes. That meeting with Vanessa's mom was very uh, heart wrenching. Gotta find a way to help her. Some more answers. There's got to be people out there that have answers. There's one that is Sergeant Seven and Lafayette. Just medic. There's a man down. You got three in here. I believe so. Yes. So, you know, if Pat and I didn't believe with our whole hearts that extra police staffing would make a big difference, we wouldn't be constantly talking about it. It's just that we we really know from being out there. You can watch what we do. Imagine there's 10 more cars doing what we do. I mean, just roaming around, being in hot spots, handling pending calls. Just imagine the impact that... 10 additional cars can have. We're talking 20 additional if they got the right number of officers. 20 at any given time. Right. But, uh, and it's not as if, here's the other thing, it's not as if we don't think the mayor is good at some things. We, 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 we don't follow the rest of city government that closely, right? Right. Uh, I mean, but we know a lot about law enforcement and public safety. And so that's what when we refer when we refer to public safety issues, it's because of our experience in that area. You know, and and we both say some of the same things the mayor does regarding intervention with kids when they're young. Absolutely. Same page. We're doing it already. Absolutely. And we we support it. And we even support social workers, mental health workers being out in the field with cops. Wholeheartedly. But you take these guys last night, you're not talking about 29 to 35 year olds being able to life coach them away from shooting each other. Quick sweep by the truck park. See if there might be some news channels down there now doing live shots. Did anybody say if I look skinny enough in that video? We did not. No, just. They didn't say the opposite either. Okay, well, that's good. shots down here. Let's see if we can find out for you who's down here for their, for their live shot. Oh, there's another one. Hi. Good. Good. How are you? How are you? What time is your live shot? Yeah, uh, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. But you know what? We have... Um, By the way, just so you know, in full yeah. disclosure, you're live with us right now. Oh, okay, you know, great. On, on Thank our, you. On our Facebook Live. We're here 11. We yep. have um, Sunday night football. So when I say 10 o'clock, it's actually more like 11.30 because we'll okay. be late right. tonight. But, uh, that's good. Well, yeah. you get more viewers that way. You, yeah. Right? <laughs> well, hopefully, if it's a good game, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. He's going to a man down over at 7th and Lafayette. Oh, okay. But, uh, what was that? Is it another shooting? No, it's oh, okay. just a man down. Okay, but, okay. But thanks for covering this oh, story. It's you, very Sheriff. important. Thank you, Sheriff. Thanks for all your help. No. It's been wonderful as always. So we appreciate all the information. Yeah, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care of you guys. Thanks. thanks. This is uh, in actuality a um, 
It's a national story. International. Yeah, international story. International story. Alright, then you can cancel 272. I'm closer. Pretty dog there. Not the way we like St. Paul making the news. Who's that? This. We don't. Yeah. Oh, this no. is not the way to make the news. No. Well, I mean, the, uh, you know, honestly, you know, you do realize this is the same street, unfortunately, that the four people were at before the, the quadruple murder. Yep. Two weeks ago. And partially because this is a very, this is our most active street, to be fair. These reporters are hiding out in their car. It's just, we'll just scare them a little bit. How's that? We'll just scare yeah. them. See if they say anything. Tell them to wake up. We just hey thought guys. we'd wake you guys up. <laughs> Good, how are you? Are you guys on right we now? We are, yeah. We're yeah, like, we are. We've been, we've been on since 7. We're going we're gonna to cut off at 10 so we can watch you. I did? Yeah. You're not on a tent? No. You're, are, you, are you doing live or are you repackaging? Uh, well, you do live package. Live package, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I was talking to a guy. He said they don't use the towers anymore, huh? No. It's all cell phone based. It's pretty pretty good quality. And it's pretty nice. It's pretty good. It's pretty rough. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for covering this, Karen. I mean, this is an important story. Yeah. 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 Well, there was a bit. Did you just see the vigil earlier tonight? There was a. There was one right across yeah. the street. It wasn't. It was, yeah, it wasn't really a large group. No. Well, I think it has to do because only one perished. I mean. That's that's sad. It's very sad. And sometimes I worry when we say the other drugs like survive. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I told you this, but Pat and I were talking the other night, and and uh, I, it, it applies to all the channels, but in terms of semantics, we didn't like when. They used the term in the wrong place at the wrong time for the girl that was killed on the scooter, oh, yeah. because it implied she was somehow in the wrong place. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, it wasn't her. She obviously it wasn't her fault. She wasn't in the wrong place. She was right where she should be. Yeah. It's that you had two groups of, well, I can't use the term on live right now, but two groups that you know were evil people shooting at each other. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Yeah. No. Right, dark well, days. Yeah, it's uh Well, how long you been at this? Wow. What year did you start? <laughs> well I can sub I can subtract, but we've been at it, we were much we've been at it much longer than you. <laughs> All right. But here's the important thing. Really appreciate that you're here doing it because this is this is an international event, and you're 100 percent right. People, a lot of elected officials want to pretend it didn't happen. That's just the way it is. I'm not, I'm not going to get into the politics anymore, but people just pretend it never happened, and then it, and that's not what should happen. This young lady's life should should be remembered. I hope. I hope so. Well, eventually you'll get video of what happened, and that'll be that'll be good. Vanessa Jensen's mother was down here. Uh, she, yeah, she. Uh, Vanessa's the one that died from the street ra street racers. Yeah, yeah. That's that was. You might want to do a story about that. You might want to do a follow up because you know those three kid murders haven't been solved, and neither of the two that were shot at the street racers. No, there is that. Yeah. There is that. Lots. All right, well, go back to work and uh, make me look skinny. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Have Thank a good you. night. Thank you. 
Well, that was a nice conversation. Karen Scullin from Channel 9 News. So, you know, Care 11 is there, Channel 9 is there. Sure, it's okay. Thanks for being there. Where's the pause? Changes to a robbery, clear report. Gotta, keep, gotta keep this. So here's a, here's one of the trucks that used to have the tower on it. I guess they don't use those microwave towers anymore. All through the cell phone now. Who's this guy with? We should just check. Looks like he's... Thank him for being here. Hi. Who are you with? Channel 5. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here. This is, is is Ben doing a live or not? Yeah, he's Ben right here. Uh, hey, man, how's it going? Good, how's the night? Good, we're just thanking you for being here. Oh, yeah, well, thank you guys. Yeah, no, appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can, uh, we can have some healing here soon. Yeah, and... yeah. It's an unbelievable story, really, when you think about it. Yeah, it is. So. But, All right, didn't mean to disturb you and get you out of the truck. but. All right. You don't use that big tower anymore, huh? That microwave tower? Not often. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. It's still up on top of a Galtier. It's just I got a tree right here. Yeah. And with the new technology, we can just do it with the backpack. And basically, you know, a bunch of cell phones is what we oh, use. But when you auction that one off, I want it for an undercover vehicle. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, you See you later. Guys. Thank you. That would be a great undercover vehicle, wouldn't it? It <laughs> sure would. Well, there's... Here's another one, right here. That, that one we talked to, but... Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, this is... They're all here, thank goodness. We missed one, though. So I have this one. Hey, guys. Hey, David. What's going on, hey, David, how are you? Good to see you? Thanks for being here. You got a helper today, huh? You got, we're double teaming or what? Better, than I am. I help. better looking for sure. That's for sure. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for being out here. Yeah, very Tell much. So. Sorry. I think uh, you talked to Caroline earlier. Yeah, we're actually using some of your sound in my piece tonight at 10. Okay, well, th yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, I recognize you, of course. But thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, th thanks for being here. We're live right now, so re we're reporting on the reporters. Uh oh. <laughs> you gotta disclose that. You gotta yeah. disclose yeah, that. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> Turnabout's fair play, right, David? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's try, let's try. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Take nice. care Thanks guys. for being here. And is anybody doing a follow up about the victim's life at all? Yeah, um, I think we're going to try to do that tomorrow. I mean, from her friends today, the family might talk tomorrow. We should really, you know, get more out yeah. about her. Have I mean, you talked to her, the family or anything? No. no. But, I mean. We were in touch with a cousin. I don't think they've been very outspoken, but. Well, I mean, understandably. Yeah, so, yeah. Just, I can't imagine. Can't yeah, imagine. Yeah. But I think that's her story's got to be told to make it real for people. We did talk to, we talked online oh, to was, how. You were really going to come say hi to everyone but me, huh? You no, know, we, you know, I was going to back up. You were hiding between cars. You were hiding between cars. I was going to have to go around the block again. I'm sure. I'm sure. Hey, how come you guys got two reporters on the story? Us? No, her. Channel 9. You know, I just have to carry some weight for Karen. Is that it? Yeah, you okay. know how that goes. Okay. <laughs> hey, I know you're live right now, so yeah. don't ask for We can mute it for a what, minute. What's the best way to reach you? Um, I tried calling earlier. Just, just, just. And I'm wondering if there's a good that. way to.
Well, that confirms it is a big story. Just that all the media is here, that's good. I'm really glad, and we, we need to do, when we go live next, we need to talk in detail about the victim, you and I. Yeah, we, need to, we do. So if you know her family, or if you've reached out to them, and they'd like to share a little bit about the victim, Please let us know. Because we would like to do a story on her. I mean, there were pretty decent stories done on the four homicide victims. But you want to mention a little bit about, mention her name again there, Pat? Everyone. Yeah. You can male it Marquisha. Wiley. She's 27 years old. She's a trained veterinary technician working in the field of being a, a veterinarian technician. I found that uh, people involved with uh, the veterinary fields are universally very caring people. Don't forget Marquisha. How much time is it, Pat? It is 9.41. We'll wrap up right at 10. You guys go watch the end of the football game or watch the news and see what the news has to report. I always record all the news. In fact, I can I can set a recording from my phone. Did you know that? You know, I think I can too, but uh, I've got to I've got to figure out exactly how to do it. Do something. Thank you. I think I got the wrong call. Thirteen hundred Wilson. We'll stay with you for a few minutes okay. until we see what rolls out the next fifteen minutes. We want to go watch the news and see, how, <coughs> see what the city leaders have to say too. That's the part that's the most interest to us. Is what our city leaders have to say. Feel free after we're um, done here to watch the news and then post your comments about what you saw in the news. Radio up there on three, there, Pat. Turn that a little bit here. Well, what I'm going to do here, pull over for a minute. Turn these lights on. Never actually done this. We're going to try something new. What, what do we got? You have a new viewer tonight. Yeah? Dylan from Bismarck, North Dakota. Dylan's a former St. Paul officer. Oh, yeah. The first time viewing, she's sitting home with uh, their new son, who was a little... We had lunch with them, right? Yeah. Before they moved, yeah. 
Well, thanks for watching. They didn't, they didn't believe that I had enough juice to get them a shout out, so. Well, yeah, you better say it one more time, a little louder. Go ahead. Sierra and Dylan. There you go. Sierra and Dylan. And what's their little son's name? Maverick. Maverick. I saw him at lunch. He was in the little, little, little carrier, yeah. right? He's, in, he's a lot bigger now, but he's, former, he's a little grumpy tonight. Former St. Paul officer, worked here. Friend of Alex's, Action Alex. And he moved to Bismarck. What, I, I, what is avocado Alex? I got a bunch of texts about avocado Alex. Somebody said that. They wanted to name you after a fruit. As long as Joe is a jelly, but you should be a fruit. I don't know, the guy, there's apparently some fruit that starts with an A that I never heard of. Uh, is it, is it a, a... How about, we should call you Always There, Alex. I think that would be, that would be a good one. There think? you go, that's perfect. Always There. That's perfect. Isn't there a song that goes like that? Always There? Always There. It sounds like an old George Strait song. No, you're always on my mind. No, that's not, that's that, that doesn't fit. You are always there. We're gonna ha we're gonna hang it up at ten, and I know your your boss wants you to work by ten in the morning. So it's very stringent on that. Stuff. You use you use some good judgment. There's a couple uh, there's a couple calls out. Monty's pretty busy, so I might swing through and just check on their shots if I heard that. Absolutely. A little, a little. All right. There is a song called "Always There." Here's the lyrics, Alex. It's after you. I don't know, it kind of fits, fits you. It says, such a good feeling, that's where I want to be. Locked in, locked in your prison. That's the, <laughs> locked in your prison. Of total ecstasy. It sounds like a love song. You're so strong and you're so together. Next to you, there is nothing better. I think that's your song, your song. Always there, always there, always now my, there. Now my uh, live on patrol fan club will be singing it. I gotta, we gotta, we have to play it. We gotta play it next time we go live. Always there. Will they ding you for the violation or whatever? Yeah, they will. It's by Ronnie Laws and William Jeffrey. But I can read some, the words. For some reason I had the Baywatch theme song stuck in my head for a second. It's not the same thing, obviously. Locked in your prison. See, that just fits you. Locked in your prison. <laughs> hey, go to work. Somebody might go to jail. Code 521. Go to work. See ya. You guys have a good night. See you, Alex. Thank you. Thanks for the help last night, Pat. Absolutely. Good job. All right, so what I got to do here. I got a post. So, picture this, this is. This is a picture. I don't know if I can post on my own stream. What do you think? Well, it's not actually my stream, is it? It's live on patrol. So, that's the bullet on the wall of the lady's house. Wow. How do you like to have that in your wall? Jeez. Came through three windows and embedded in the wall. I wonder if it's a rifle bullet. That's what I thought. But I'm not... An expert, expert, but it's a longer bullet than regular. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let me just see if I can. Never done this before. Let's just see if it can be done. Let's go to Live on Patrol. Go to the stream. I don't like to bring cameras into people's homes, that's why we didn't do that. How do I get to the pictures? Oh, you know what? You know what you want to do? Go back to the pictures.
copy and paste? You should be able to. I thought I could go pick it up. Squad 172. I think I go to Facebook. on that another day. Can I, let me try sending yeah, send that to you. Send it to you and you can post it. Yeah, yeah. that's good idea. How's it going? Today, <coughs> check Catholic Charities, Opportunity Center. I bit my tongue the other day. That's never fun. No, but not the sight of it. So now I can't talk as good as I used to be able to, which wasn't that great to start. The more you bite it, the swollen it, the more swollen it gets. I'll accept any home remedies that are out there. Maybe. But maybe it's going to work. Maybe what? It might work. Well, I think you can do it, maybe, because you're not streaming the... You can put it on as a comment. Well, no, didn't let me do it. Well, maybe while you're live, you can't post pictures. Only when you're not live. It says the photo feature must be turned on. And I don't think we want to do that because we don't want, you know, a bunch of pictures being put on. Yeah. But, uh... Good thinking. We'll, uh... I will post that picture in the comments when the live stream ends. Yeah. Of the bullet That's in the wall at the lady's house. 1058 5th Street, right? Yep. Oh, and then they had shots fired there after that. Three times tonight on 5th, 5th Street. Another squad street. 2736 traffic. Hey! What's going on, Transit? Yeah, we're sneaking up on you. Olive in Christian Union Olive. This is our old car. We gotta get our new one back. We, we had a little, little smashed up. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Thank you. Transit officers in charge of safety in the transit stops. Are you charged up to where I can use this? Sure. Yeah, probably going down to Fifth in Minnesota. At some point to check his. Hey, by the way, I was thinking about this. You know, next, you know, we had our one year anniversary from the start, right? Right. But next Friday, or this Friday, is the anniversary of YouTube. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. I don't know, October 16th or something was when we started the first YouTube. And so we'll have a good gauge of how many views we've had. Since we started, you know, mm -hmm. since we started YouTube, because we YouTube. But here's the question: We're going to have a contest because little does anybody know. But I've been keeping track of how many Mountain Dews we drank in the last year. No, you haven't. So we're going to have a contest. People can guess how many Mountain <laughs> Dews we've drank. Well, we kinda, got all I'm kind of scared to know. We have all the bottles in the back seat. <laughs> so, we're going to wrap 
back up here in a minute. But before we do, just a little history. You know, Pat and I started, well, Pat started in San Antonio, but I started here in 77, and then Pat, you started, what, 80? Uh, 79 in the academy, when I graduated. That's what I thought. And when we started here, we both were proud to be a part of the St. Paul Police Department. Every minute of every day. Yeah, yeah. And um, we started out, well, there's two buildings, but I'm going to show you the historical building. The old St. Paul Police Department up here on 10th Street. It was a classic police department. And Just like your picture from the movies. It was just like you see in the movies. Just like any police show where they walk in and there's a desk sergeant and a counter there and elevators to go to a lot of different places so we're just 101 east 10th street you can look it up in the historical annals of police work it's that building right there in front of us on the right that you're starting to see of course the building across the street was eventually purchased and we did our our training there but that doesn't count so when they turn this building into condominiums they, they required that they save the face of it, the safe face of the building. So shrink that picture just a hair there, Pat. We're obviously in a bike lane here, but... So that's where we started our work, right there. And 101 East 10th Street, St. Paul Police Department, 1977, 1979. And they saved the front of the building there. And the first floor, you'd walk in up the steps, and you go to the desk officer there. And there were holding cells in the back that went up to an old jail. Mm -hmm. Old jail run by the sheriff's office. Temporary. <coughs> and then up on third floor here was all the investigators. And that uh, was always, you know, chief's yeah, office back on third floor. Anything else you remember about that place? That, Nine one three. Uh, Thank you. There used to be a skyway across the street too to the other building for training. The skyway's been taken. That's right. Down. That's right. And that actually went up after we went through the right, academy. Right. 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 But one hundred and one East Tenth Street. If uh, you ever get any pictures, go online. Look at the pictures of the old police department. We got a lot of memories there. We're glad that. We're glad that. Uh, we were able to have that opportunity here. So we're gonna sign off now. We're gonna go watch the news at 10 o'clock. I hope you will, but don't hesitate to post on our page things that you see on the news or go to the news page or the Pioneer Press and let your thoughts be known on what can be done as crime lives. And I will be posting a photo of that bullet that lodged in that family's home at uh, Fifth and Earl. But uh, thank you for being with us tonight it's uh, kind of a somber night there's uh, not a whole lot to be happy about tonight don't forget the victims you know both Vanessa and remember remember Mike Weisha please and we'll have more Mark, on her Mark in the next Weisha. day or Mark two, Weisha, next day or two. but uh, so go watch your local news and uh, see what you can learn from that and always be kind Thank you. Good night.